Hello and welcome to another gameplay review on the Vakayu Gameplay Channel. And in this one we have Graves with an interesting name and Kindred with an also interesting name. No Rek'Sai in this game, although kind of warrants hotfix nerfs I think at this particular stage. Kindred's also kind of giga strong. Graves on the other hand is also very strong, but he only has a 49% win rate because the champion is never played properly. It's also difficult to play properly because where he lacks in the mechanical difficulty, say through a, a Karthus or something like that, as we little shifty shifty down here, he also has that jungle application that's a little difficult to kind of put together. Most Graves players can figure out the mechanics to a certain degree, although it's not always very good, and then their jungling sucks, you know? Or their mechanics are terrible, but the jungling is amazing. And so you need this fusion of jungle potency as well as mechanical proficiency to make Graves hit that sweet spot. Obviously, we do have the Ghost Blade itemization. You would have seen the Shifty Shifty here, hopefully because you saw the Kindred cross across the river. Not to tongue-tie myself too much. This is the point of this ward, right? We put this ward right here so you can see a ki Kindred Q against the wall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is a full challenge of Korean game. So if this happens to you, then, you know, remember it happens to them. See, this is why people who place the ward further down on the river, I don't like that. Place it higher up because if they presuppose that you will, in fact... Uh, ward the river to see the invade and they go around it then the ward being a, f a bit further higher up the river allows you great detection grave sees this decides to immediately cut and rotate and that's the difference there between you know your low elo junglers and your high elo junglers because your low elo junglers might do something like this it might look like this but the graves is able to ward anticipate cut across and cut off the kindred now decides to go towards the raptors for some particular reason the nautilus sees this decides to roam leaves his eye out to burn the kindred's gonna snag the raptor camp we're gonna ward over the wall and see that that's gone zaya has to back up most likely in your game she dies irrelevant to this particular point and now we're chasing a kindred around our jungle this game hello kaisa is a little weird already but it also showcases a lot of what you might see in low elo these low elo fiestas and tendencies. Now, the Kindred, in the meanwhile, has just gone back to base, leaving Kaisa to die. So that right there, if you're the Kindred and you're saying, haha, get out, you did this to your mid lane. You did this through this invade. Do you need to do this? No. Is Graves the kind of champion you want to do this to? Also, no. Because Graves has the ability, the range, the amount of ability to get on down there and actually do something about it. Kindred does shit on Graves to a large degree, but... I'm just not a fan of all of these Fiesta strategies level 1. If Kindred just did a straight up regular clear into some sort of action, they would have a much better time. Now, obviously, this will be the battle of who has smite, who does not. Kindred doesn't. We don't know that. Now we're like, okay, Kaisa has prior, but uh, Kindred has a longsword advantage. Can I still win this? Using the smoke screen, trying to get that true group passive stack up. Jax is going to rotate and get that stun, which is great. Kaisa is going to hit that W, which is also great. Going to flash Q to get the graves. Nautilus misses the hook. We make sure we flash that hook also. Now she's a little bit doomed, I think. She also dies. So the Kindred's perspective, and this is why this is a fun game. This is a good game because oftentimes we have regular beginnings, boring beginnings, AFK beginnings, invade beginnings, and you know, there's not much we can discuss. This is absolutely jam packed loaded. The Kindred does, even if it's a little bit clumsy, a cheese invade here. The Greys or any other jungler in the game should be tracking this. If you're against a Kindred and you aren't warding River or warding Blue, you should be, because you need to see this. Now, if the Kindred does this and you have no ability for your bot lane to rotate, you are slow so you can't get there in time, it's absolutely fine to simply do your Krugs and then go and invade the Blue and Grom. I've done that as we pause here on this action here, just to, so I can encapsulate my point. I've gone, warded this at 108 Desire, compromised my first initial camp because I couldn't have plans set up, but I was against Nidley, who's obviously going to want to do those things. I do the Krugs. I see the Nidalee on my ward. So I said, okay, I know this is warded because I watched a top laner like this now who had prior move on down toward the tribe, which should move back up. Haha, so I can't walk through this way without being seen. Therefore, I take the long way round, make sure I cut in here, take this, take this. Nidalee cuts across, takes some camps, shows up here on my ward that I placed because I kept my warding totem. I gain top lane because it's pushing. Huzzah. What did I lose? The top side grab. Total control. So if you're in the Graves' position here, okay, if you are unable to rotate to that, it's okay not to because the red into the blue, if they just simply take that and go back to the red side, is so dumb. It's such a waste of time. The Kindred has to basically know that you're not going for that vertical jungling. Otherwise, you're going to get one blue and get out and it really just doesn't do anything. So, all of that being said, the Graves did a good job collapsing, used his range advantage. Kindred did the dumb thing which was going here. Really, really stupid. 
And the Graves took the fight against the Kindred, and you saw the Kindred win. Long Sword of Pocket, Stronger Champion. No smite for either jungler. Graves, unfortunately, will die. Did die on the top side, but he's able to come back down to the bottom side here, control his camps. We see the bottom lane here going back to base. We don't see that. So Graves is like, you know what? They're basing, most likely. I can just pull this out. Now, low elo junglers will not see you do this, right? Because they won't look click. They'll just be looking down here or looking here. You got to click and look where you have vision when the monsters are available. Kindred obviously does see this. And uh, because the Felix is by himself, because Kai's has been pushed in, losing because of what the Kindred did, right? Your mid lane is losing because of you. Even if it is Kai's mid, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You see these weird picks in Korean Challenger. They're just as weak against good pilots and actual champions. Why would you go and contest this? Silver moment, bruv, because you shouldn't be in the pit here. I'm assuming you have the smite, which we do. We're able to clean up the kills. This is great. Now you're looking at this and going, okay, is this game over or not? Never. Never is it over. But if you're the kindred, love it for this because I had a coaching session today talking exactly about this kind of stuff. If you're forcing these issues, and your laners are not able to rotate. Your laners are getting, are getting compromised because of your decisions. It's on you. It's your fault. That's it. End of story. Absolutely. You know, driving across mid lane there against the Kaiser who had a bit of pressure into the Raptor Pit, knowing the Graves just cut down from red to the blue and then moved up with the Nautilus. Why would you put her in that scenario? Ditch her, obviously. Now here, the Graves uses that leverage of the bottom lane having to be, you know, separated with the Nautilus going back to base. Why would you, as Kindred Gex, the top side here, why would you even contest a dragon? It's not worth the steal, it's not worth the death. Simply take your red if it's available, take whatever camps are available, go up top side here, clear this quadrant, counter jungle here if possible. Use the time he's doing the dragon to make the Giga play. This is why... Oh. Anyway, that's why Kindred's broken. Graves is stronger, but I always, and everyone knows, you like to play Kindred against uh, against Graves because it's a nice counter matchup. But this is why you drag the red into the brush so you can see them arriving, so you can make that decision. Do I fight? Do I leave? Or whatever. Uh, ideally, we're level 6 there, so we can make a good fight, but it is what it is. We die to the Kindred. I'm okay with us taking that fight as Graves because you're Graves, right? You know, we have to be able to do some something to, uh, to get this lead. And with 3-2-2, they're 2-3-2, and the gold amount is... 3.0 to 3.5. Solid gap at this particular stage. Either way, the Kindred's making these aggressive plays. What will happen in your games? The Blanc won't rotate. You'll die 1v1. You'll lose your red buff. All these things, right? And you think to yourself, man, the enemy jungle is playing so aggressively. What do I do? You do what the Graves has done here. You either do the thing I was talking about here with the kind of avoidance, or if you can actually run into them, you do what the Graves did. You just cut across, push them off, especially if you're quick about it, recognize it with your good vision. Thunderfly, when you're being invaded like this and things like that, you just control your camps as best you can. And honestly, if you see the Kindred move up here, invade you, and you just cannot take it, you know that, just leave. Right, just absolutely leave. Kindred doesn't have six here. We're hoping to get six for the R tower dive. We're not able to do it. We could go cheeky cheeky, but again, a little bit risky now. LeBlanc obviously has that prior. We compromise our mid laner. Graves is just vibing. And this is the big thing about Graves. Against ganking junglers, aggressive junglers, farming junglers, as we shout across the mid lane here beautifully. You always want to make sure you're controlling your camps. And when you can slide it for counter jungle, do it. When you can slide it for an objective, do it. You are the map control smooth operator, right? You want to always be in control of your own econ, such that with 51 CS, with a dragon, gonna go for this now, using that E of the wall, kited to the back of the pit, and the Kindred's at 40, down 11, down a bunch of gold, no objectives, perfect, if you're great, it's perfect, the champion is giga strong when you do this Ghost Blade Collector BC combination, uh, it really is strong, actually, and no fix, don't worry, adjusting Storm Razor again, so I'm interested to see if that comes back a little bit for your auto attack focus gameplay, it was obviously really strong, with the initial itemization of 13.10, but this is nice. I like this a lot. This is what Faker is playing a little bit, and a few other people are playing a little bit, just because of the uh, static shift, which is, of course, absolutely, absolutely stupid when it's being rushed by LeBlanc and things like this. No, 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 no. Riot Games, 
The middle of the season was not the time to do that. Kim's just going to show up here to try and save the bottom lane. Now I'm going to go in on the Zai, get that kill here. We're going to keep with a W, get another cooldown reset on that spell. We have another one here as a W persists. Wolf attack, wolf attack, wolf attack. We get those kills. 4-3-2. Graves will come straight out of base here with the Herald, as we know, as would have been his goal. To use a gank into a Herald into a Dragon. Kindred does do a bit of a rotation here. Okay, right. Here we go. Let's see. Do we win now? Kindred still has R up, obviously. Graves has his R up as well. We're going with the Dark Harvest tech here, not the Fleet Foot Work or anything like that. This will equalize a bit. Because Graves has Ghost Blade, right? And now he's finished at Mythic. And Kindred, obviously, in pocket had 1800. That fight will go in the way of Graves. Okay? Obviously, Kindred is super strong, but still not strong enough to get around absolute huge itemization spikes. Now let's just go to the mid lane here. Keep wards. We have the Herald. We want to use it. And we are chasing down the Kaiser. We run into the Phyllis. We say, yo, look at the damage. Kaiser goes in. Kindred all is burned, but Rokan is also dead. This should be a very straightforward Q. He tried the Q flayed away, but the, uh, the, the Kaiser was able to escape. Nice moves here. See, this is the kind of stuff when you guys talk about, hey, I have a lead. How do I close the game? Most of you will just be on the Wolves, going to defend the Raptors. The Grave says, look, we shoved them out of lane. Here's Kaisa. I see somebody on the map. She's super du duper 1 HP. I, at this particular stage, have my ultimate. The timer's lying to you because of the clock. I want to go and alter. Get that free cash money kill. I had a Silver Graves coaching. Kind of stuff that I put in all the courses. Where the enemy mid laner was low under turret. And our Graves was kind of jungling some Wolves. This was literally two days ago. And the guy tried to go across and get that kill but just assumed his R would get it. The mid laner used that barrier, we didn't get the kill. Here, you wanna make sure you get these cleanups. It's okay to sort of use your E, use your flash, use your smite, use your R, just make sure you get that kill because it's such a big shutdown when you have a Herald in your pocket and you're busy counter juggling. So the Evolia shows up randomly, so we're like, okay, I guess we go for this fight. The burst damage is absolutely disgusting there from the Ghost Blade. Use our R as well, nice smooth burst combo. Really comes out quite tasty when you're playing Lethality Graves itemization spike. And of course, our team is with us. But that's fine. The blue team was with Kindred. They all died, all four of them, in a 3v4. Obviously, Kaiser was low, but again, we've, re we've talked about that. That's your own damn fault if you're the Kindred. Now, 11 minutes 13, we see the plates here. Two point, uh, should be two flat once we get this, so we'll make sure we hover around to get some as well. 1.75 is the true damage accelerant, true, uh, you know, final push. Let's see if we get it with one charge. Boom, not quite. That's why the changes were good, right? Changes prevented this happening like nine minutes. Hex flash over the wall. We're going to get the ult. We're going to get the knock. We're going to do the hook. And Graves is like, yo, bros, I'm out. And that's a good thing. No, when to leave. Because we have Collector. Kindred topside. Get the kill. LeBlanc. What am I looking at here? I, I, I thought I had blue team vision and LeBlanc went dashing away. Blue team vision. LeBlanc distorts back out, obviously. We'll go for this now. Here, interesting. What would most of you do? What would I do? Probably thinking, aha, I'm going to go for the dragon here. Is that something we necessarily need to do? No, because we have such a big lead. We know what Kindred is, what Kindred is going to try and go for here, which is, of course, the Raptors going long pathing to be safe. Just cut him off. Take him away. Take everything out. We don't need the dragon. We'll get it afterwards. Uh, we'll clear that vision deep. Now we'll see. Kindred will be like, well, that's sad. I better rotate up. Grace is like, well, Kindred's going to rotate up. Jax is going to hold this wave. Let me shadow a bit more. Now there's mind games. Kindred's like, well, I don't win anymore. I'm down two levels because too aggressive. When you're too aggressive and your aggression isn't good and you ruin your laner's days and your own and you get the enemy jungle fed in the meantime. Ah, tragic, but hey, what can you do about it? We're going to E forward here. Hit that smoke screen. Smoke screen needs to be used more often, people. If you play Graves, please use that smoke screen. The E smoke screen is super juicy. Get the gap get the smoke screen. And then obviously now... Rukana showed up here, which is going to ult <laughs> Just ult back into the auto free kills. We have the queue up. We can use it against the wall if they want to come closer here. Bot lane is fisting in the mid lane. We've got Kaisa and LeBlanc in the bottom lane. This is all. Graves. This is it. Exquisite shutdown of aggressive jungling. Lost 1v1s against a jungler who's good 1v1 against him, but he still tried and was close. Uh, diving mid lane again. He If you're playing Raves and you're not Ghostblade Collector doing that to people because you're so fed, 
then something went wrong. Now, in a random game like this, where there was a lot of aggression and you had to move around a lot with the fistings and so on and get a lot of Dark Harvest Axe, yes, obviously, it's Kindred Ult under this turret, make sure we get that kill so we don't get blasted away, but we'll just uh, go under the turret, who cares? A little bit of True Grit, never hurt nobody except uh, everybody else playing against Graves. Yeah, so, if Kindred did a typical thing, and you had to full clear down, no harm, no foul, right? Kindred did this and gank bottom lane, and you're like, hey, I've got a vertical, but Kindred's gonna reset and go here. Okay, no stress. I'll just full clear down, I get the scuttle, I can always do this, I can do here, I can counter jungle the 420, the 440, the second small camps, the Krugs, the Raptors. <sighs> you know, you're absolutely relaxed as Griffs. You don't have to have high kill participation. You just have to have high experience and gold income. That can take many forms. And as I said, most people build wrong, don't know the burst combos, and just don't have the same amount of map pressure as these kinds of Korean graves do. Now we take the objective. Outside the rule, fall back to our camps here. We see the Kaisa low, LeBlanc trying stuff. Kaisa also have, also has rather the uh, static shift completed. I didn't miss the item. Not like this though. Not like this though. Oh, hello, Philios. We're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. We're, see, that's Graves' ranged issue a little bit against uh, things like Zaya, right? You need a good angle of approach. Quite often you do, actually. You can't just run out of a lot of comps if they're not a disengage. Injured marks us for some peculiar reason. Probably going to look to try something a little hyper-aggressive. Distorts. Yeah, yeah, just watch. This is great. This is perfect grave stuff. You, Everyone's posturing and chilling and holding waves and... Uh, well, fine, I'm gonna go farm in shadow. That's it, right? I'm watching, uh-huh. I'm watching, uh-huh. Do my quadrant, react as necessary. Kaisa obviously doesn't have E-Evolve yet at all. We'll just do a cheeky double auto. And uh, Kindred, is Kindred going for the greed here? No, decides to try to go to the mid lane. Obviously, low HP Zaya, low HP Nautilus. Don't have some uh, flash here, but should be able to get the E-Proc onto the Nautilus, which we can do. Grave says, okay, cool. I see you. I see you, Jake Sully. Look the ward. Haha, <laughs> now you have to use Scanner, you son of a bitch. No Umbral Glaive for you. Still, I think everyone in High Elo will perpetually hate Umbral Glaive. Graves. For all time. Gave a guy who does all of the things I'm talking about with damage and map control and counter juggling and farming and adaptability and all those good things. But he shut down all your vision, so you can no longer really track him for as long as you could. Otherwise, tragedy when you give a guy a Scanner plus Umbral. Who knew? Double, Dragon, double, Herald, within the flow of the game. Back to base here. Most likely Kindred has all of this under control anyway, and all our team are kind of off the map, no real reason to stay. And uh, what do we have at this particular point? 4.2, we got Black Cleaver in one buy. No boots even. I mean, I would probably have boots. I, I would probably have upgraded my boots. MS is good in lower ELO games. In this game, we're fine. We have, what, 430 still? Yeah, so it's a cut because I had a dummy moment. I was like, okay, so, you know, normally I would go boots and the mobility is pretty good, but obviously we have Gus Walker Hatchling, we have Boots of Speed, and we have Ghost Blade. So we're able to maintain that 30 pretty quickly. However, still, all things considering, you're most likely not going to be pushing the map this aggressively as you're familiarizing yourself with the mechanics and how to play the champion in the jungle. Get your boots, your resistances, and Zerkers if you feel like particularly overly aggressive. Resistance boots still good. Nautilus from the flank. Alt kill into the Aphelios, kill the turret, perfect. This is the kind of stuff that just blows open a game. I don't think people realize this, right? Kaiser's down here, okay, Kindred's out of position. And this is what you don't see in Lowell. I think they're just gonna end. Are they just gonna end? They can. This is the kind of stuff that Lowell just doesn't have. Woo! <laughs> Three Adam Graves at uh, 16, 17 minutes. 16, 2, 3. Dark Harvest stacks at 17. This second Herald is why I tell you to get it, because if they misposition like they did here, as a low elo, mid elo, diamond elo, jung anything below master, any jungler in the damn game, <laughs> as apparently even challenger, if you can get this push, right? We don't stay to farm camps. We're like, push deep here. We see our teams here. We see Kaiser. We know Kindred's floating around doing who knows what. Make the pick. Right? Push in, activate the Herald, they have two, we have four, kill someone quickly, use your burst combo, use your R from range to snipe that, especially with Dark Harvest, right? That gives you free stacks, free kills, it's amazing. That's what the synergy is for with Lethality. Collect a two, even that little bit of percentage does help. Now they're dead, you kill two, they're completely out of position, you've got this Herald push, you do so much damage, and they just try and hold and you just blow them up. And you win the game. I love games 
that are still comebackable by the blue team's perspective with a bit of patience. But usually, if the red team knows what they're doing, they just end super quickly. And I've looked at a few replays for this video, and we had some great KDAs, but it just said slow to end, slow to end, slow to end. I'm like, why are you being slow to end on a Graves who's fed? Because we don't get the second Herald, we don't pull the trigger quickly enough, and we don't have the right amount of damage. Gold, 13.1k, Kindred, 78 at the end. And remember, we were 3 to 3.5. So the Kindred went from 3 to 8, basically, just adding 5k gold. And the Grace went from 3.5 to 13.1, almost 10k in that same stretch. Think about that for a second. Think about how strong that is on this kind of champion when you do it correctly. Hopefully this enlightens you to the speed of the game that you need, whether it's a Fiesta, whether it's measured and typical, whether it's standard and boring, Graves will do the work. Don't forget bootcamp coming up very shortly in the middle of July to start the beginning of the season. We moved it to make sure it's kind of gives you time to play your end of season uh, finale, and then we'll start the second split up with a bootcamp to give you everything you need to know to achieve that peak and higher. I'll explain more right now after this, but thank you very much for watching. Rukaido GG for your courses, Zada GG for your champion guides, and as always, I will see you all. In the next one. And with the season being split into two parts, it is time for another bootcamp. Myself and Vokaido GG will be joining forces with Gosu Academy once more, as well as Coach Kybit, to ensure that you have all the fundamentals you need that will outlast any meta and maybe even time itself. You'll see the topics on your screen now are completely revamped curriculum, especially to build on the previous bootcamps. And along with tickets for this bootcamp, we will give you all of the previous VODs to the previous bootcamp so that you can have all the fundamentals you need as a total package. And if you can't make the lessons, don't worry about it. It's a two-week bootcamp. If you have work, school, there will be VODs available online for you as well. Teaching materials, exercises, classes, lectures, coaching, as well as a free course giveaway from my own personal site, Vakai.gg. You'll be entered into a raffle and I will be giving away 10 of those courses. Click the link below to join the Ghost Academy Bootcamp on June 26th with myself and Coach Kybit, and I look forward to seeing all of you there.